to everybody, but nobody wants to talk to them. And now they've obviously set money aside to mess with us, which then we're going to have to spend our money, and they're spending their money. It's just wasting more and more taxpayer money. Right. The same people that complain about how much legal fees we have are obviously okay with 511 spending plenty of money to fight us. Yes, Chuck? I, I appreciate no. what you're saying. Um, I think one thing I'm questioning is, I understand you're going into executive session to discuss this, and the lease is not available. <coughs> but I, I can't find any exception to Sunshine Law to permit executive session for lease. This is not a purchase. This is a lease. There's, there's no exemption to consider the purchase of a property for public purpose or the sale of property at competitive bidding. And certainly there's no premature disclosure issue with this lease because you're not going to any other parties. You're not soliciting bids, correct? You're going to one entity to cut a deal. So how, how is this? There, there is premature disclosure because the, the uh, Commissioners are going to discuss the terms of the lease. So that is that is something that uh, is, is proper in executive session. And in terms of in terms of this being not being a purchase or a sale, that is correct. But it is a conveyance of an interest in property. So therefore, I think it falls, in my opinion, falls within the executive session provisions. I, I, read, I read G2, and G2 specifically identifies lease and does not identify lease as an exception to the Sunshine Law. But again, I'm not a lawyer. I stayed at the Holiday Inn once. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I challenge the fact that this is an executive session worthy um, conversation. Okay. That, that's another reason to get him on your team. I mean, <laughs> I don't know why you would make a decision. We're gonna we're gonna hold the comments at this point. Um, I I do I do feel like Mr. Potajo wants to be heard and should be heard before we go into the executive session. He's standing up. Is that correct, Mr. Potajo? My name is Roy Potajo. Live on Stillwater Drive. One of the things I want to mention here is that uh, we are not an entity. You have attacked us repeatedly. We are three volunteers that represent nobody. We have not produced this. This is something that was produced as a guide. It would not hold water anyway simply because we have no money. We are an entity that is supported right now by the trustees. Until we pass a levy, we don't exist. If we never pass a levy, we will never exist. As far as helping you people, nobody in the 16 years that I served in your place Nobody came running to my aid to help me. If you can't do it, there was a gentleman here that just said, put on your big boy pants and try and do the job. That Thank you, Mr. Pottajill. I'd like to point out that Mr. Pottajill was not removed from the board as a lot of us seem to think. He quit because he didn't like the way things were going. In fact, he was invited back to this board and didn't take the position to come back. So I'm starting to wonder if we're going to spend $325,000 on a new park board chaired by Mr. Potajo, <coughs> who may or may not have started some accounting issues here when he essentially took his bat and ball and went home. This seems just absurd to me. And, and we need to put on our big boy pants. We've tried numerous times. I was on vacation with my family. I took a phone call from Shelly and offered to have a conversation with you. Shelly tried to broker that conversation. You didn't want to talk to us. You want to talk to us now because we have something that we can do to move forward. You never wanted to talk to us, Mr. Potajil. You have never got a question from you. You may have sent stuff to the trustees, but I never got a request from you. Did you get a request from Shelly to speak with me? Because my understanding is that phone call, that happened. But how did Shelly represent 
this township other than a volunteer and a citizen of the, of the township. She is not a trustee. You don't have Scott, also, I did recently send you an email after you called Hawaii. Did you do that? The day after you eviscerated me in the newspaper, you sent me that email and acted like we didn't have any issues. I, I'm going to close this up. I, I have one more thing. The graph that Roy says he did not produce was produced from documents. I produced the graph to show you in color what these documents say. You can go right now to the trustee's website, July 11, 2018, and go to attachment number seven and see that a board is going to spend over half of their money or has budgeted over half of their money for legal fees, and you will not convince me that that money isn't earmarked to take down this board and dissolve it, leading us to the whole situation. This isn't about money anymore. This is about ODNR or some other entity coming in and purchasing or taking over the land. I move to enter into executive session to consider the purchase and leasing of land of real property pursuant to section 121.22G2 of the ORC. Before, I second that. Before you go, I have a question. Excuse me, is there going to be a decision at the end of this process? We don't know. This Mr. Ray. Who's the question may be of value to you in your, your executive? I will allow one, one more question. All right. I'm, I'm Bob Schaff. I live on Russell Road. I've been here for 38 years. Okay. Uh, I'm a little perplexed. Why is the Geauga Park District interested in uh, increasing their debt if there's nothing for them to gain from leasing our parks? I think that's a question for them. I can't answer why they agreed to go. No, I, it's probably a question you might want to ask them. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead. Mr. Waite. Yes. Mr. Suhey. Yes. Ms. Weiss Carson. Yes. Let the record reflect that Jim Gillette was invited into executive session. Are you holding executive session here? And we'll, we'll move, so there, yeah, there are a lot of people.